A container contains 150 liters of mixture of wine and water in the ratio of 4 is to 1. Then how much water must be added to this container so that the ratio of wine to water becomes 4 is to 3. So basically he says that there is a container which contains a mixture of wine and water, right? Wine and water. There is a mixture of wine and water. What is the ratio? 4 is to 1 is the ratio, which means for every 4 parts of wine, there is 1 part of water. Okay, and the total quantity in this container is 150 liters. Right, total quantity is 150 liters. Now, he says how much water must be added to this container. So, to this container, we are adding water, pure water. Right, you add pure water, only water, there is no wine. Right, how much of water must be added so that finally you get a new mixture of again wine and water where the ratio is right, wine plus water where the ratio becomes 4 is to 3. Getting it? Initial ratio is 4 is to 1. The final ratio is 4 is to 3. How much of water must be added? Right? No wine, only water. Only water is getting added. So how much of water has to be added so that the ratio becomes 4 is to 3? So this is like a typical allocation case, right? You have a mixture, you add uh, one of the items to it and change the proportion or change the ratio. So one way to solve the question is to apply allocation rule. So let me quickly explain the allocation rule to you. And then uh, also look at a better way of solving the question, right? Allegation rule is also important because most of the times we have to use this in, in getting an answer there. So you have to go by allegation rule, the rule of allegation. What, what do we do? See, we, we allegation rule generally states that, uh, you know, you, uh, let's, let's say that this is like type 1, this is type 2, and this is the mixture, right? So you write something about type 1, type 2, and mixture in this form. When you take the cross differences, you get the ratio of Q1 is to Q2, right? Like this is Q1 quantity and this is Q2. This is what? This is how the allegation rules are applied. Now, what, what can we take in place of T1, T2, and we can take the concentrations, either the concentrations of wine everywhere or the concentrations of water everywhere. So you get concentration of wine in T1, concentration of wine in T2, and concentration of wine in the mixture, or the concentration of water in T1, concentration of water in T2, and concentration of water in the mixture. When you take the cross differences, the ratio that we get is nothing but Q1 C2. So let's go with the concentration of water. What do you think is the concentration of water in T1? See, water is only one part out of five parts. So we can say one out of five. In T2, it's only water, pure water. So can you say the whole unit is water? One is water, one water and zero one. You're able to follow. The whole unit itself is water, right? Here, out of one unit, I mean out of total five units, only one unit is water. So out of five parts, one part is water. Here complete one out of one is water and in the final picture how much is water three out of seven three parts of water out of total seven parts of water when you take a cross difference you should get q1 is to q so try to do that you will get one minus three by seven i know this is lengthy but you got to know this process as well i'll explain your smarter method immediately after this but let's understand this first so we have got one minus three by seven here and this should be uh, three by seven minus one by you, you just take the difference of the value, right? Difference of 1 and 3 by 7 here, difference of 1 by 5 and 3 by 7. So this is the ratio. Solve it now. So if you actually see, we already know that Q1 is 150 liters. So I can say 150 is to Q2 equals to 1 minus 3 by 7 is what? 4 by 7. 4 by 7 is to, uh, what is the LCM here? 7 and 5, the LCM is 35. So this goes 5 times 15, this goes 7 times. So 15 minus 7 is 8, right? 35 is the same, 5, 3 is 15 and 7, 15 is 7 8. So that's the ratio basically. So this is like 1 times, 2 times, 1 times and 5 times. So finally what we get is uh, 5 is to 2. The ratio becomes 5 is to 2. So 150 is to Q2 is equal to 5 is to 2. So what will be Q2 here? Q2 will be 150 into 2 by 5, which comes out to be 6 liters. 6 liters. So your answer has to be option B, right? Answer has to be option B. Here? 60 liters. So, which means if I add 60 liters of uh, water to this mixture, you will get the new mixture in which the ratio is 4 is 2. Right? I hope you have understood how we have taken 1 by 5, 1 and 3 by 7. Right? 1 by 5 is the concentration of water. 1 part out of total 4 plus 1, 5 parts. Here it is 1 out of 1, 1 by 1 basically. And here it is 3 out of 7. Now, why did we take the concentration of water? What happens if you take the concentration of, let's say, wine? Nothing would change. Whether you take concentrations of water or concentrations of wine in these three places, the final answer would remain the same. It would remain 5 is 2. Right? But let's say you have to go by concentrations of wine. What will be the value? Instead of 1 by 5, you will take 4 by 5. 
You said oh, four parts of wine out of total five parts. Here it is zero. There's no wine, there's no wine at all, right? So it should be zero. And here it is four by seven. Again, take the cross difference. Ratio would remain the same. Zero difference four by seven is four by seven. See, that's what you have got here, right? Four by seven. And four by five minus four by seven, when you do the calculation, you end up getting same, uh, you know, eight by thirty. Eight by thirty-five. So four by seven is to eight by thirty-five. Again, for, on for the simulation, you get five two. So the the point is, use one of the items. Either do it for wine or do it for water. Don't try to mix it. Like in one place, you have taken concentration of wine. Other place, you take concentration of water. Then you you know screw it up completely. So answer is sixty liters. But then, do we want to do all this in the exam? Well, not really. This doesn't look like the easiest way to solve it. Well, the method is important. Allocation method is important. The allocation rule is important because there are questions there. You cannot, uh, I mean, I would say solving it using allocation rule will make it very, very easy. But in this particular question, we don't really have to do this. So let me now explain the smarter way of solving the question. Right? I mean, this is really very simple. Just focus on the ratios. The point says that there is 150 liters of a mixture where the ratio is 4 is to 1. You have added some water. You have added some water to it. You don't have to write all this on paper in the exam. I'm just trying to explain it to you. You have added some water. What quantity we do not know. But then after that, the ratio becomes ratio becomes four is to three, right? In the new mixture, whatever is the quantity, the ratio of wine to water becomes four is three. Now, one point to be noted here is if you focus and understand what is that getting, what is that is getting added? Only water is getting added. Are we adding any wine? No, we are not adding wine. We are adding only water. Which means so whatever is the quantity of wine here should be the quantity of wine here. Since we are adding only water, since we are adding pure water to this. The quantity of wine initially should be equal to the quantity of wine finally, right? Initial quantity of wine should be equal to the final quantity of wine, right? Initial quantity of wine should be equal to the final quantity of wine. Interestingly, if you observe the ratios, in the initial case, wine were four parts. In the initial case, wine were four parts. In the final case also, the wine remains same four parts. Only the number of parts of water have increased, right? Here it is like one part of water, now we have got three parts of water. So the simple logic that you need to apply here is, since the number of parts for wine are same, see, it need not be same always, the, I mean, depends on the ratio, like for example, although we are not adding any wine, the ratio may change, the ratio may become instead of 4 is 3, it may become 5 is 2. But in this particular case, if you see, the number of parts of wine initially were 4, number of parts of wine, even after adding water, remains 4. So very clearly, uh, water has increased by 2 parts, water was only 1 part earlier, now it has become 3 parts. So two more parts of water have been added. Now how do you find out what is this two parts? It's simple. Total quantity is 150 liters initially. That 150 liters has been divided in what ratio? One, 4 is to 1 ratio. So basically total 5 parts, right? 4 parts and 1 part, total 5 parts. If 150 liters has been divided into 5 parts, can I say 1 part is equal to 30 liters? 1 part is equal to 30 liters, yes or no? Total there are 5 parts. Each part will be equal to 30 liters. I know that water is equal to water added, the water that got added is equal to two parts, right? Earlier it was one part, now it is three parts, two parts. If one part is 30 liters, two parts would be 60 liters. So that's your answer option. Again, uh, let me repeat, when you solve it in the exam, you don't put anything on paper. You don't have to write these steps on paper. You can just look at the values and understand. Like here, we have got 150 liters of the quantity, four is to one. So very simple calculation that each part is equal to 30 liters. And when you look at 4 is 1 and 4 is 3, you realize that water has increased by two parts. If one part is 30 liters, two parts will be 6 liters. So I think in about 8 to 10 seconds, you'll be able to mark the answer to this question.